All it took was one trip to Mexico to forever change the relationship between Stevie Nicks and George Harrison. Was it for the better or for the worse? Though in the mid-1970s, Fleetwood Mac's most successful album Rumors had yet to be released, they were already a very successful band. As a result, Fleetwood Mac singer-songwriter Stevie Nicks had met a number of famous musicians, many of whom she'd admired for years. Like most people her age, Nix was a fan of the Beatles, who broke up in 1970. And in 1977, around the same time rumors came out, Nix had the opportunity to spend time with one former Beatle in particular. That chance came in Acapulco, Mexico, at a Warner Brothers music industry convention, according to Far Out magazine. Though this wasn't the first or only time Stevie Nicks met a former member of the Fab Four, this person would go on to become her favorite Beatle of them all, George Harrison. Although Nix said she can't recall ever meeting Paul McCartney, she also hung out with drummer Ringo Starr on several occasions, and her 1981 hit Edge of Seventeen would be written in part about the death of John Lennon at the hands of assassin Mark David Chapman a year earlier. These encounters with former Beatles came and went for the Fleetwood Mac member, despite how important the iconic Liverpool band was to her. When Nix met the quiet Beatle, though, it was the start of a lifelong friendship for both musicians. Oh, by all means, I'd be quite prepared for that eventuality. According to Stevie Nicks' own words, George Harrison's willingness to simply spend quality time with her bonded the two musicians together. Besides meeting in Mexico, they'd also spent some time together in Hawaii. But it was the time that Harrison and Nicks spent together in Acapulco that cemented their friendship. They both liked to stay up late at night. Nicks famously went to bed in the wee hours of the morning, and Harrison liked to garden at midnight, her showbiz cheat sheet. Being up together in the middle of the night created the opportunity for the two musicians to have meaningful conversations and get to know one another. Nix said of Harrison via Far Out magazine, he was handsome, he was debonair, and he was funny. They all have that certain je ne sais quoi that's just so attractive and easy to be with. Although she felt that all of the Beatles were charming, it was different with Harrison. She explained, you didn't know him, then you've known him 15 minutes, and you feel like you've known him a long time. Among other topics in those late-night conversations, the two discussed what life was like as a famous musician. As Far Out Magazine notes, Nix remembered one incident that occurred with Harrison while in Mexico. She explained, We were standing by the pool, and George Harrison said, They are coming for us. They are going to try to push us into that pool. He put his hand on my back and said, Absolutely, they'll throw us in the pool, so let's get away from the pool. During one of those late-night hangout sessions, Nix and Harrison decided to write some music together. They collaborated on one of his solo tunes called Here Comes the Moon, which was a sequel of sorts to the Beatles' hit Here Comes the Sun. The relationship fostered in Mexico became so important to Stevie Nicks that she continues to carry a picture of George Harrison, who died in 2001 from cancer, with her every time she tours. According to Far Out Magazine, Nix said, there's lots of nights where you kind of go, I wish I didn't have to go on stage tonight. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it. And then I look at George Harrison and I go, well, you just have to because it's important. It's important to make people happy. It's because of these experiences with the late Beatles guitarist, songwriter, and solo musician that Nix considers Harrison her favorite Beatle. 